Hi and welcome to another buddy review video that uh, Ben and I are doing and this time we have read Girl on Fire by Gemma Ramor. It's um it's February so it's currently Women in Horror Month for those that could be changing but uh, for now it is so this seemed like a perfect read for Ben and I to do to celebrate women in horror. Now this was the first time that I had read something slightly longer from Gemma. This is her latest novella. I'd read a couple of her short stories which were awesome and she only lives about an hour down the road from me so I knew I had to read something. Um, I've got this, I've got Dear Laura and White Pines but we thought that this one being her latest would be a good buddy read for us. So what did I think? Well I know that the character Ruby is based on someone from one of Gemma's short stories. Now, I haven't read that particular short story, so I went into this nice and fresh. And one thing that I had heard said about this, um, it was Ross Jeffrey actually, had said that Gemma's one of these people that is able to show her readers and trust in her own writing in that she can... Um, imply things by just inferring. So for example, um, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that Ruby has a, a pretty horrific background and that she suffers terrible uh, sexual abuse from her father. But we, we never experience that. It's part of her backstory. It's alluded to and, and that's enough. Um, Gemma doesn't feel the need to go into deep description with that. She explains enough and she trusts in her own writing and she trusts in us as a reader enough that that's all that she needs to do. There's a lot of things that are inferred rather than detailed descriptions and thrown in your face and that's definitely um, something that she's ever so good at. Um, there's nothing that is in here that is shocking for shock value or anything like that. Um, it reminded me of a few things and all of them good things. Um, it reminded me of something that could be um, within the Marvel Universe. So because she is a girl on fire um, and she kind of had that whole um, backstory of, of why and how she became this person. It, it was almost like a superhero origin story and that would have worked really well if it had been something within that universe. Um, it reminded me, um, because again of her history, um, of a kind of a classic uh, female revenge story. So not quite on the same vein but um something a little bit like um i spit on your grave um or last house on the left that kind of thing where um, a female character suffers something horrific usually rape or prolonged sexual abuse by her father in this case and then um it decides to um exact revenge and goes on and all hell breaks loose and all of that kind of stuff I love those kind of films anyway, what to put to do with like retribution and, and the female managing to overcome all of the horrific stuff that's happened to her. And obviously there there was um a side of that in here. And the other thing it reminded me of, which is a massive, massive bonus, is um the X Files. Uh, I think honestly if she'd have come across Mulder he probably would have looked after and protected her because Mulder was always more like that he had the, the interest in these people and there was definitely um, nods to there being other people um, like this within the world there was a couple of mentions um, of when she was um, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but there's a moment where she kind of meets someone that we're not really sure who it is, but it seems like it could be like a government agent. And um, there's mention of other people that could be like her and therefore is there going to be more of these? It's definitely left on a kind of a cliffhanger as if there's going to be more stories whether we have more stories just about Ruby or whether there's more within her universe, we shall see. But um, it's also, um, I really like the way that it's split into, it's split into chapters, obviously, but it's split into different characters. So this chapter is uh, from Ruby's perspective. And then we had other chapters. Sometimes they were slightly shorter, but they were from, so this is from a character called Kat. That's her perspective. 
um, we had uh, Helen. That was her point of view. And that made it really interesting as well. You could kind of see the impact that Ruby was having on other people. So it wasn't all just um, her and her um, way that she saw things and, and, and that she was doing all this stuff and why she was doing it. Um, we got to see from other people's point of views, innocent people's point of views as well, the kind of the impact and exactly what was happening to the world now that Ruby was in it and kind of just that um, collateral damage that came alongside. Um, I don't know if any of that made sense. I'm desperately trying not to give away too much because I went into it almost not really knowing a much about it and I think that that was a real benefit. Um, Gemma's writing is stunning. Um, I will definitely definitely be reading more of her things and very much looking forward to it. Um, I was surprised that it is set in America. Gemma obviously being a fellow Brit like me, I, for some reason I just presumed it was going to be British. It didn't um, detract from the um, style or calibre of writing or anything like that. It, it was beautiful and you wouldn't know that Gemma wasn't American. It's just, I had gone in thinking that it was going to be British and I don't know why. Um, I would highly recommend this. I gave it four stars because of the length, really, um, and that I wanted more. Um, but a very solid five star and I will certainly be reading more of my longer works from Gemma and very much looking forward to them. So that is my ramblings on why I liked Girl on Fire so much and I would highly recommend it and uh, now I'll let Ben do what is likely to be a more concise and erudite version of why you should read Girl on Fire. Thank you! Hey guys, Ben here aka Reading Vicariously and I'm doing another buddy read video with Janine so thank you Janine for having me on your channel yet again. And you know, this month we decided to read Girl on Fire by Gemma Amore. I have never read anything by Gemma, and so I was excited to have the opportunity to finally dive into her work. And you know, this was a great, in my opinion, a great first, um, you know, an introduction to to her her writing style and her work and all of that because this was an awesome book, Girl on Fire. Um, it starts with a bang, literally. Uh, with our main character Ruby kind of fleeing from this um, past and this trauma and this life that she had before and she's driving out to the wild blue yonder and then something happens and her car explodes and um, with her inside obviously and she emerges from the wreckage um, you know rising from the ashes uh, the story is you know not trying to hide the the whole phoenix symbolism it's very overt um, you know, she, she, um, is, is the girl on fire and from the ashes, she's got a Phoenix tattoo in the back of her head. Um, and you know, the story is very straightforward in that regard. She is angry, um, at the world and she is going to take out her anger on the world. And, um, there was a point early on in the book where I was a little worried that she was going to be this, you know, fiery, furious, unstoppable force. Um, and that was going to be it, you know, that she was going to be kind of a one sided character, to be honest. And, um, you know, it just wouldn't be as interesting. But um, I am I'm glad to say that that was not the case. Um, that, you know, after a few chapters, there's some, some new things that happen, some new developments. Um, she meets some companions that show kind of a different side to her. They are, they kind of reveal, um, her vulnerable side a little bit. And, um, there are some things that happen to her that I'm not going to spoil, but that kind of put her in, in positions of, of real, uh, danger and, and uh, that are threats to her. And so, you know, there's, there's these different elements to the story that, that give it more layers and give it more, um, than, than what it could, you know, the, the one-sidedness. And so love that. And, um, there's also these really cool hints at a larger world of, you know, other oddities and, uh, people with superhuman abilities and things like that. And, um, so that got me really excited, you know, none of it really came to the foreground of this particular uh, book, but it's there and it's in the background. 
And um, from what I understand, this is the first book in a in a series, or at least there's going to be a sequel. So I'm really excited to see you know what else comes up later on in this. Um, let's see. Other thing that I really liked about this book is that it is written from different characters' perspectives. It kind of jumps around, which I didn't expect going into it. Um, you know, because we start with Ruby, and then all of a sudden um, it shifts. Uh, in a chapter to somebody else, and then it shifts a few more times uh, to some other characters. And I really thought that was um, a, a great way to tell the story. It was actually really interesting to see um, Ruby from a different character's perspective and see the destruction and the damage uh, that she was wreaking the havoc and the fear that people had of her um, as this kind of, you know, unstoppable and really invincible kind of a uh, force of, of nature. And um, so seeing that from the other characters' perspectives, I almost like their chapters better just because, um, you know, it, it, it got, to, we got to see a little bit more about the world around Ruby as well, right? When, when you're in Ruby, you're very much laser focused on, on, on the rage and the revenge, uh, which is also really good stuff. Um, so, you know, not that I didn't like those chapters, but, um, and you know, the, the ending, again, no spoilers for any of this stuff. Uh, it's, uh, but the ending was, I thought was perfect for this story. Uh, it was tragic. It was beautiful. It was redemptive. Um, it was all of these things kind of together. It's a very, very memorable ending for me. It's kind of seared into my brain. Actually, there's a lot about this book that is, um, a lot of the scenes and the characters, um, that are going to stay with me, um, for a while. And that's a good thing. So, um, thank you, um, to Janine for having me for this buddy read. Um, and very much, like I said, looking forward to reading more from Gemma and, um, doing more buddy reads with Janine. So thank you guys. Take care.